image that the West has of Shenzhen, a decade ago when I first came, it was very skewed, right? It was like Shenzhen is Foxconn, there's child labor, people throw themselves off buildings, they only make iPhones. They'll just sort of dismiss it and say, yeah, I know Shenzhen, I read about that in the book. That's just not the case, there's so much to offer. And the cool thing is that in this particular city, everything revolves around electronics and tech and building hardware. Shenzhen's all about speed. I mean, you know, you try doing something in the UK, it'll take you around a month. Here you can do it in a couple of days. The energy flow inside, you feel you can tap into the power. You can reuse the supply chains for whatever you want to create. Through this Shenzhen Cycle, we came to the future of the Shenzhen Cycle. You know, most people don't realize that there's at least 26% of the technology from Silicon Valley actually comes from Shenzhen. Shenzhen is creating more millionaires than any other cities in China. When China started to open up in the late 80s, global outsourcing continued to grow. The base in Shenzhen becoming bigger and bigger. From 300,000 to 10 million, no cities in the history of human civilization as we know that was able to do this. So you can see like down there, there's a person there with a uh, what looks like a pile of trash, but if you look closely, it's just that they're, they're going through mobile phones and stripping out parts from them. It's like shucking corn, almost. It is something that will really need more exchanges and more dialogues between China and the rest of the world. Because we are a little behind, I think, in, uh, in really grasping what is happening here. We have an idea walking to China, and the chances are we have half a million people Thinking of the same thing is all about who make it happen first. That's a fact.